Okay, hi guys. So, Screencast-O-Matic is not working. Harper is barging in. It's literally Harper barging in. Um, but we are going to just make it work this way. I'll upload this later. So, we're going to go through the big topics for your test today. And this test covers three major things. Number one, radicals. Number two, um, systems of equations. And number three, rationals. So, those are kind of our three big topics that we're going to be dealing with today. So let's start with radicals, because this is something that once you can rewrite it and solve these equations, this is something you guys have been doing really well with. So starting with just converting between radical and exponential form. So, <coughs> excuse me. So if I want to convert between a radical and an exponent form here, I need to think about the idea of a power over a root, right? That's my idea, power over root. So here, I see that this is x to the first power. There's no exponent there, so I assume it's a 1. And then what's the root? Well, it's a square root. There's no number written out front. So what I understand is that that means that it's a second root because I'm looking for a number that would multiply by itself twice to give you that. So this converted would be x to the power over root, which is 1 over 2. So square root is the same as x to the 1 half. Now, what if I'm going the other way? So here, that's my power. That's my root, right? So I know that this is a seventh root and it's x to the third power. Or you could say it's a seventh root and then the whole thing is to the third power. Those are equivalent. It doesn't matter which one you choose because either way we have a seventh root and a third power. I don't care whether it's inside or outside. Now, on this one, things get a little trickier because first of all, not everything's under the radical. And second of all, not everything is to the same power. So here, the 2 is not under the radical. So the 2 is just going to stay on its own. Now, the x is to the first, and the y is to the second. So when I rewrite this, I'm going to say x to the first power with a second root, and y to the second power with a second root, right? So those have separate exponents. The x is not being squared. So this would really be 2 x to the one-half, and then y to the first. Now, one more like this, 3x to the two-thirds. Often, we get fooled by the fact that this 3 and this x to the two-thirds are separate, right? So the 3 is really to the first power. That's just on its own. So the x to the two-thirds, I can rewrite that as power over root. So this would be a third root and a second power. But the 3 is just to the first, so it's going to stay to the first. Okay, please pause the video if you need to, and if you're watching this later, send me questions as you have them, okay? So, let's do some simplifying of radicals. So, I'm actually going to do this negative one, because that tends to be one that we get stuck on, so let's talk about that. So, if I have a negative cube root, do I have an I there, or do I not have an I there? So, what I would think about is, could you have a cube root of a negative number, or does it give you an error or an imaginary solution? So what I would do is throw that in your calculator if you're not sure. You can have the cube root of a negative number because a negative times a negative times a negative can give you out a negative. So anytime you have this, what I would do is just pull the negative out to the front and then deal with it as if that constant was positive. Now the other thing I would say is I'm going to make that b to the first so I don't forget that. So this now I can simplify. I see that it's a cube root, so I'm looking for groups of 3. So I'm going to find all my prime factors of 240. So 240, well, I know that's 2 times 120. And I know that that's 2 times 60, 2 times 30, 2 times 15, and then 3 times 5. So if I wrote that as all product of prime factors, this would be 2, 2, 2, 2, so 4 twos and then a 3 and a 5. Now, a to the 12th, b to the 1st, c to the negative 3rd. We'll deal with those in a second. So let's start with these. So I've got three 2's there, so I'm going to take out a 2 with my negative out here. And then 2, 3, and 5, there's no groups of 3. So this would be a cubed root of 2 times 3 is 6 times 5 is 30. Now, what do I do with those variables? Well, remember we're looking for groups of 3. So you could write out 12a's. 
you would wind up with four groups of three. So, you know, we can write these all out for six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. There's one B. And then C to the negative third. Well, think about that as like C to the negative first, C to the negative first, C to the negative first, right? So here I've got one group of A, two groups of A, three groups of A, four groups of A. So take out A to the fourth. B, I can't do anything with because that is not in a group of three. And then I've got one group of three C to the negative first. So this would be cubed root, what's left inside the 30 and the B. And I don't usually leave negative exponents, so A to the fourth cube root of 30B. And I'm going to bring that C to the first down to the denominator. So that would be like a totally simplified out form. Now let's try another one. Let's do this one down here. And again, all these questions are from your review sheet. So if you need to look at them, just go look there. So 81 x to the fourth y to the seventh is e to the eighth, and it's saying to the one fourth power. Now, if it just said to simplify and write with exponential powers, then what you could do is do power to a power with each of these. And that would be 81 to the one fourth x to the first, because you're multiplying four times one fourth y to the 7 fourths, and z to the 8 over 4, which is 2. So that's not wrong. But what if it said to rewrite it as a radical? So let's do it that way. So rewriting this as a radical, it would be the fourth root, and then the first power. And then I've got 81 x to the fourth, y to the seventh, z to the eighth. Now, let's simplify. So 81, I know that that's 9 times 9. And I know that that's 3 times 3 for each of those. Those are all prime. So I'm looking for the fourth root now of 1, 2, 3, 4 threes. And remember to put your dots between it so it doesn't say 3,000. And then 4 x's, 7 y's, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 z's. So again, if you can do this without writing it all the way out, that's okay. But some of us can't, so we're going to do it this way. Now. Let's find some groups of four. There's a group of four, take out a three. There's a group of four, take out an X. There's a group of four, take out a Y. There's still three left in there. There's a group of four and there's a group of four. So I'm gonna take out a Z squared. So then I still have fourth root of Y cubed. And that would be my simplified answer. Okay, let's do some laws of exponents with these. So we've got three laws of exponents that we should know. We should know that when we multiply like bases, we add the exponents. When we divide like bases, we subtract the exponents. And when we raise a power to a power, we multiply the exponents, right? So let's start with this one. On this one, if I was trying to simplify this, the only thing I see going on there is power to a power. So this would be three, and then I'm gonna multiply three over two times four over three which would give me 12 over 6, which is just 3 squared. Now, x to the 4th times 4 over 3, that's x to the 16 over 3. And y to the 6 fifths to the 4 thirds is y to the 24 fifteenths. So I can simplify these a little bit. 16 over 3 is as reduced as it gets. 24 um, over 15, those are both divisible by 3, so this would be 8 fifths. So this is really 9, x to the 16 over 3, y to the 8 fifths. Now the next one, here look at what's going on. So I see division, so I'm going to subtract my exponents. So 4 divided by 16, well those aren't exponents, so just divide those. Now, x to the 2 thirds, x to the third, I'm going to subtract those, so 2 thirds minus 3, you can just put it in your calculator, or we could really think this through and say, okay, that would be 9 thirds, and so this is x to the negative 7 thirds, and then 4 minus 5 sixths, well, 4 is 24 sixths, so this would be y to the 19 over 6. Now typically we don't want to leave a negative exponent, so I'm going to move that down to the bottom. So it would be y to the 19 sixths over 4x to the 7 thirds. And that's as simplified as it can get. If it says to rewrite in a radical, you could do that, but it doesn't, so I'm not going to sweat it too much. 
Now on this last one, for the sake of time, we're not going to do this, but again, you could do a power to a power up in your numerator and then divide your like bases, so subtract. Also remember that you have a calculator, so if all else fails, put a number in for x, put it in your calculator, right? See which answer choices match up if it's a multiple choice. So all of those are test-taking strategies you can still use here. All right, let's do a couple equations and then we'll move on to some systems. So if I wanna solve equations with either fractional exponents or with radicals, the thing that you wanna do is get the base of that exponent or the part under the radical alone, right? So let's say that I look at this one. Now, if I look at this, I'm going to start by looking at what the base of that exponent. So that's this whole parentheses right there. So I'm going to add 3 to the other side to get that alone. So 512 is n plus 24 to the 3 over 2. Now, you have two options from here. Option 1 is to raise both sides to the reciprocal power. So this is to the 3 over 2 right now. What I would be doing is raising both sides to the 2 thirds and then going from there. Option 2 is to rewrite this as a radical or in radical form. So the 3 over 2 power, that's the third power and a square root. So what that says is I'm going to do the square root of n plus 24 to the third power, right? Or you could write it as the square root of that to the third on the outside. So it's up to you what you would prefer to write. So I'm going to talk about the reciprocal power way because I think we're okay on the radical one. I want to make sure we're okay on the reciprocal one as well. So here, when I raise this to this power over here, they cancel out. The thing I need to be mindful about here is do I need a plus or minus, right? Now look at the power we raised this to, that power right there. That power says that I'm taking a squared exponent and a third root. With a third root, we don't need a plus or minus. If that was an odd or an even root, whoops, if that was an even root, we would need a plus or minus. But it's an odd root, so we don't need it. Then you're going to take 5 over 12 to the 2 thirds, which you can just put in your calculator. And that spits out 64. So now I've got a much simpler equation. I've got n plus 24 equals 64. Subtract your 20 over, and so n equals 40. Now, you should always be checking for extraneous solutions here. And that means go back to your original equation and make sure that this checks. Don't go back to one of your intermediate steps. Go back to your original, original, original equation. All right, let's try another one. Um, let's look at this one. We're not going to go through this one entirely, but let's just talk about it. So on this one, you've got a square root on both sides. So what I would do is just square both sides, and you'll be left with r um, over 8 equals 2r minus 105. From here, you could put this over 1 and cross multiply, or you could just multiply through by 8 to make that 8 cancel out and go from there. Now, I really do want to spend a little bit of time on this one because you've got a radical, but it's like mixed up with this other thing. So here's my radical. This is not part of the radical. So like we mentioned before, you need to get that radical alone, right? So I'm going to add x to the other side. So that gives me 7 minus 2x equals 4 plus x. Now that my radical's in alone, I'm going to square both sides. When I square the right side, I need to remember to square the binomial. So this is 7 minus 2x. This side, you either need to use double distribution or the box method, and this would be 16 plus 8x plus x squared. Again, write out those steps. I did it in my head because I've been doing this for a long time, but write out those steps. Now, this is quadratic, so I need to get it equal to 0. So I'm going to keep my x squared positive. I'm going to leave the right side of my equation alone. I'm just going to deal with the left side. So I'm going to add 2x to both sides, and I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. So this will give me x squared plus 10x plus 9 equals 0. Now I'm going to factor that. So I'm going to get x plus 9, x plus 1 equals 0. And that gives me x equals negative 9 and x equals negative 1. Now let's check. Do those both check? Remember we're plugging back into these original equations. 
So now I just need to check these. So I'm going to start by checking negative 9. If we plug that in, we're going to get the square root of 7 plus 18 minus negative 9. And my goal is for that to equal 4. So this is going to be plus 9. I'm already seeing this might be an issue here. And this is the square root of 25, which is 5. That does not equal 4. So this one does not check. Right? So that's no bueno. Now, if I plug in negative 1, I'm getting the square root of 7 plus 2 plus 1. So that's 3 plus 1, which does equal 4. So that one does check. So always make sure on these that you check for any extraneous solutions. Okay, let's look at some systems. So the idea of the system is that you'll have two different equations where you have two different variables. And we want to solve these algebraically or graphically. Graphically, you can just graph them and see where they intersect. So let's look at some of the algebra because that's going to be a little more interesting for us. So let's say I have this, uh, y plus 20x equals 39 and 15 plus 4x squared plus 9x equals y. So I'm going to use substitution here. Now on this, I actually see that like this one's already isolated for y. So I can take that and plug that in where y is. So instead of y, I'm going to write this and then continue the equation plus 20x equals 39. So again, this is the same as all of that. I just substituted that in. And now I'm going to start combining like terms. So I've got 4x squared plus 9, 29x plus 15 equals 39. Now this is quadratic, so I'm going to move the 39 to the other side. So that's plus 15 minus 39, which is negative 24 equals 0. And now I need to either factor or use quadratic formula. Um, we are going to do this by factoring because I know you're looking at this and going, ah, this is scary. But you could handle it. If you want to do quadratic formula, that's fine too. But by factoring, we're going to do a times c, right? So 4 times 24, which is 92. And that should be negative because it's negative 24. And then we need factors of negative 92 that add to be 29. So this is a good time to go in your calculator and put in negative 92 over x. Or actually 96 over x because this is 96. So we need two things that multiply to be negative 96 and add to 29. So let's try 96 over 4. That's 24, so that's not good. So let's try 96 over 6. That's 16. 16 wouldn't work there. 92 over, or I'm sorry, 96 over 3. That's 32. Those work, right? So if I had positive 32 and negative 3, those would add up to be 29. So I'm going to split the middle here. So 4x squared plus 32x minus 3x minus 24 equals 0. My GCF for the first two is 4x, and that leaves me with x plus 8. Second GCF is negative 3, that leaves me with x plus 8. And so now I'm left with 4x minus 3 and x plus 8. So this would give me x equals 3 fourths, set that equal to 0, and x equals negative 8, set that equal to 0. Now, this is a system, so we're not done yet. We still need to solve for y. So for x equals 3 fourths, I'm going to plug in the top equation. It's just a little easier to work with. So y plus 20 times 3 fourths should equal 39. So y plus 15 equals 39. So y should equal 24. So this coordinate is 3 fourths, 24. And the other coordinate is y plus 20 times negative 8 equals 39. y minus 160 equals 39. So add 160 over, and that would be 196. So this would be negative 8, 196. And that would be your solution to that system. Now let's say that we have a different type of system where this one is a circle. You could here graph it, see where they intersect, but again, your calculator can't graph these. So I'm going to do substitution here. 
Notice that y is already alone, so I'm going to plug that in wherever y is. So instead of x squared plus y squared, I'm going to have x squared plus 3x minus 5 squared equals 25. Now at least it's all in terms of x. So from there, I've got x squared plus, to multiply this out, you're going to use box method or double distribution. So 9x squared minus 30x plus 25. and that equals 25. So this is going to give me 10x squared minus 30x plus 25 equals 25, and if I move the 25 over it will just be equal 0. So now factor this. The best thing you can do here is take out a GCF, and that will leave you with x minus 3. So here I have x equals 0, if you set that equal to 0, or x equals 3. Now remember to always plug that back in to get y. So for this one, y would equal 0 minus 5. So this point would be 0, negative 5. And this would be 9 minus 5, which would be 4. So this would be 3, 4. Those would be your two solutions. Okay, so very last topic we're going to hit are rationals. So let's take a look at these. So when we do these, I want you guys to really think about the cards because everything we're doing, if you think back to the cards, you're going to know exactly what to do. Um, I'm actually going to start with not the first one. I'm going to start to one where we're just reducing, and then we'll get into some multiplication, division, and equations. So if we're just reducing, remember what you're looking for are values that are equal to 1 right? Because something over itself would equal 1 and you could cancel it out. So I want you to think always about how you would model this. If I was trying to model uh, letter A on this one, so it says which fraction can be reduced. If I was trying to model this, I would model it by doing one of two things. In the denominator, there's no way I could model that with factors. There is nothing there with factors except x squared plus 3. There's no GCF. It doesn't factor in any other way. In the numerator, if you were using the cards, I mean, you could rewrite it as like that, right? But there's no other way you could do this. There is no pair here that I could just take out. A lot of people will be like, ooh, x squared and x squared. But remember, the cards are things that you're writing next to each other, which are things that are being multiplied, not added. So you cannot break up this x squared and that 3 because technically they would be on the same card, right? Those are not factors. They are parts of an, a sum, parts of an addition problem. So this one cannot be simplified. It's already as simple as it gets, so I'm going to leave that one alone. Now, next one. I've got 3x plus 6 and x plus 3. So let's look at what I could do here. I can't just start canceling. Let's look at factors. How would I model this? So the denominator would just be x plus 3. That's fine. The numerator, I could model this as 3x plus 2. That works. Can that reduce it all? No, right? You can't just start canceling because there's a 3 in one place and not in another. There aren't cards that I could take a pair out of, so it's not that. All right, let's look at the next one. How could I model this one? So on this one, the denominator, I just put the x card there. The numerator, the only way I could model that is by thinking about it as those factors, right? Now, notice what we have here. We've got this x card and that x card. Those can be canceled out, right? So this would actually reduce to just be x plus 3. If I had this one, you would model this with a 2. You would model this with an x plus 2. Those are separate factors. Nothing reduces there. So that's why this is C. So remember, you can only cancel things, first of all, if they are factors, and second of all, if you could take a pair out from the numerator and denominator. All right, let's do, let's see if we have any more just simplifying. Uh, yeah, let's look at 10, 10 and 11. Okay, so let's actually start with 10. So 10 says, where would this be undefined? And part of thinking that through is thinking about, you know, could I simplify it, could I not? But undefined means your denominator equals 0, right? Because we can't divide by 0. So in my numerator, there's nothing I could do there to simplify it. In my denominator, if I was going to model that, I would write the factors. This would be x plus 7x minus 3. Well, first of all, this doesn't reduce at all, right? There's no way that that could reduce. But to see where this would be undefined, I'm going to set the bottom equal to 0. So x plus 7 equals 0, 
x minus 3 equals 0. So here, x cannot equal negative 7 or positive 3 because neither of those equations can be true. So that would be the spot where those are undefined. And if they asked me to describe it, I would say they make the denominator equal 0. All right, let's do another one of those. Let's look at 12 on here. So identify the values. That's the same problem. So we're not going to do that. Uh, let's look at 11. So 11 says simplify. So I've got 6b minus b squared and then b squared minus 9. I already see something that bothers me. b squared is the first term on this one and it's the second term on that one. So before I do anything else, I am going to um, take out a negative 1 to make these match in the same order. So if I factor out a negative 1 from the numerator, that would make this negative 6b plus b squared. And that is the same as negative 1 times b squared minus 6b. So now, at least I have b squared minus 9. At least I have that, right? So let's see if that simplifies at all. So in my numerator, could I factor that more? Yes, I could. I could take out a b, and then I would have b minus 6 left. In my denominator, that factors as a difference of perfect squares, so b minus 3, b plus 3. Nothing reduces, right? Just because there's a 9 and a 6 and those are both divisible by 3 does not mean this reduces. There's no factor cards that you could make match up, right? So to see where this is undefined, I'm just going to look at the denominator, and that would be at b can't be 3 or negative 3. Okay, let's do some multiplication, division, and equations because that will wrap it up for us. So let's say here that I want to do some multiplication. Some of you guys can look at this and just start canceling. If you can't, that's okay because remember when you multiply fractions, you just multiply across. So my numerator here would be 4x cubed y to the 4th. My denominator would be 20x to the 8th y to the 6th. And now I can reduce that. So 4 over 20 is 1 over 5. x cubed over x to the 8th would be x to the negative 5th. y to the 4th, y to the 6th would be y to the negative 2nd because I'm dividing, so I'm going to subtract my exponents. And so this is really 1 over 5 x to the 5th, y to the 2nd. And that would be as simplified as it gets. Now, what would be your values that we can't have here? x cannot equal 0 and y cannot equal 0 because those are what make my denominator 0. The thing you want to remember about division is that we use fraction multiplication to do division, right? We're going to be multiplying by a reciprocal. So if I asked you to do something like this problem, and I said which is equivalent to this complex fraction, the thing to remember here is that complex fractions are just division problems, right? So really I would rewrite this as x over x plus 2 divided by x squared over x squared minus 4. So to do that, I'm going to start by factoring, right? Don't flip anything until more after you've factored. So my first one's already factored divided by x squared I'm going to leave alone. This is x minus 2, x plus 2. So I'm starting with that. Now, I am going to get my restrictions on this immediately, so negative 2 and positive 2, before I flip anything. Now, once you've done that, once you've looked for those restrictions, now we can start flipping. So x over x plus 2, keep, change to multiplication, x minus 2, x plus 2, all over x squared. And remember, if you want, you can write that as x times x. So here, now I'm going to start to cancel. So x and x can cancel. x plus 2 and x plus 2 can cancel. And so really what's left here is x minus 2 over x. What is that equivalent to? Letter B. Okay, let's do one more of these. Let's look at this one. So I'm going to start, as I would with anything, like we did the card saying model this, and let's do that with some factoring. So for my numerator here, I can take out a GCF. GCF of 40 and 48 is 8, so 8, and then this is 5B plus 6. 
over. Now this, I cannot just factor out off the top of my head, but I can split the middle. So three times 10 is 30. Factors of 30 that add to be negative 13 would be negative 10 and negative three. So I'm gonna take out a B from this, and that leaves me with three B minus 10. I'm gonna take out a negative one from this, and that leaves me with three B minus 10. So this is three B minus 10 and B minus one. So three B minus 10 and B minus one. So there's my second one. Don't ask me why I started with that. Now, let's look at these two. So on the bottom one, I can take out a, let's see, what's a GC up there? Two. And that's going to leave me with 3B squared minus B minus 30. Now to factor that, I'm going to split the middle again. So 3B squared minus 30. Multiply those, I get negative 90. Factors of negative 90 that would add to be negative 1 are going to be negative 10 and positive 9. So now factor by grouping, I can take out a b on this. That's 3b minus 10 plus 3, 3b minus 10. And so this is b plus 3, 3b minus 10. So that's those factors. And my numerator, well, what could I take out? So I could take out up there uh, GCF, I see is six, nope, two. So I could take out a two. And to factor that, I'm gonna do that up here. This would be five B squared plus 21 B plus 18. So this was after having taken out the 2. Now, 5 times um, 18 is 90. And so you want factors of 90 that add to be 21. So this is going to be 6 and 15. Now I'm going to factor by grouping. So take out a B, 5B plus 6. Take out a 3, 5B plus 6. And so this is b plus 3 and 5b plus 6. So b plus 3, 5b plus 6. Woo! That was a workout. Now, this factoring, that's about as hard as it gets. We had to do split the middle three times. But we got there, okay? So now let's look at where this would be undefined. So look at each part of the bottom. So let's do this. 2 can't equal 0, so don't worry about that. This would equal 0 at negative 3. This would equal 0 at 10 over 3. So that's going to be that one. This one would also be at 10 over 3. And then this one would be at positive 1. So those are where that would be undefined. Now, let's keep change flip. So I'm going to keep this the same. I'm going to do the lazy thing here and copy and paste this the joys of technology, the slowness of technology. I could have written this faster at this point. Okay. Now, instead of division, I'm going to make that multiplication. 3B minus 10, B minus 1, over 8 times 5B plus 6. So now let's look and see if there's any new restricted values we need to add. So the first one didn't change. 8 will never equal 0, and 5b plus 6, well, that would equal 0 at negative 6 fifths. So now I have all my restricted values. So now we're going to just cancel. So b plus 3, b plus 3, 2, 2, 3b minus 10, 3b minus 10, 5b plus 6, 5b plus 6, and all that's left is b minus 1 over 8. If you could do that problem, you are in awesome shape because the factoring on that was really, really hard. But again, you just keep change flipping, and then it becomes a multiplication problem. All right, last topic. Our last one is solving for, um, solving an equation. So I'm going to start with actually letter B on this, solving this one. Remember what we're looking for here is a common denominator. So I'm going to start by modeling all my denominators. 
That one's just 1, and that one's x minus 1. Now, to find your common denominator, start by copying down your first one. And then we're going to go through each denominator and make sure all of those factors are in there. So the first one I copied down, so that's good. The second one is just a 1. Well, a 1 is unwritten in there, so that's all good. And then this has x minus 1. That's got x minus 1. So we are good to go. That's my common denominator. So now I'm going to multiply this through to each term. And I'm going to show out on my work. You don't need to if you feel like you've gotten the hang of this, but I'm going to show it out. So this would give me 2 x, x minus 1 over x, x minus 1 equals x, x minus 1 over 1 plus 2 x, x minus 1 over x minus 1. Now, the fun part about this is lots of stuff cancels. So here the x cancels, the x minus 1 cancels, 2 is left. Equals, nothing cancels on this, so this is just x squared minus x. Here are the x minus 1's cancel, so that's 2x. And what we're left with here is a quadratic. So I'm left with this. I'm going to make it equal 0. So 0 equals x squared plus x minus 2. Now, this is factorable. So I've got x plus 2, x minus 1. And that leaves me with x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 1. Now check those. Let's make sure they don't make any of my denominators undefined. If I plug this back into the original equation, that will work. It does not give me an undefined value, so this one's okay. If you try to plug this back in though, you're going to end up getting 0 in your denominators because plugging 1 back into that would give you 0. So we are going to reject x equals 1 and that is my solution. Okay, let's do one more. I'm just going to make this one up and we'll go from there. So let's say I have 5 over x plus 3 plus x over x plus 4 equals, oh, I'm sorry, over, let's see, 10 over x plus 4. And let's make that equal x over x squared plus 7x plus 12. So let's say we have that. So let's find our GC, or our, sorry, our common denominator. So I'm going to copy my first one, x plus 3. Now I'm going to look at my second denominator and see if that factor is in there. It is, in fact, not. So I'm going to add that in there. Now let's look at our third one, and I'm going to put this into factored form. When I look at that, each of these are in there. So that's all good. That means we're good to go on that front. So that is my common denominator. Now, when I distribute this out, I would have 5 x plus 3 x plus 4 over x plus 3 plus 10 x plus 3 x plus 4 over x plus 4 equals x x plus 3 x plus 4 over x plus 3 x plus 4. And now we're going to cancel. So these cancel. I'm left with 5x plus 4 plus 10x uh, plus 4 is cancel, x plus 3 equals, these all cancel, and I'm just left with x. And from here you can just distribute and solve. So 5x plus 20 plus 10x plus 30 equals x, 15x plus 50 equals x. And so I wind up getting 50 equals negative 14x. So x equals 50 over negative 14. And from there, plug back in and check. This will not make my denominator 0, so this would be my solution. So guys, those are the major topics for your test. If you still have questions, send me messages. But if you can do those things, this test will be really straightforward for you. If you have questions, come see me. I will be around in the mornings. I will be after school. And I'm here to help however. I hope you guys have a great night, and I'll talk to you later.